We start with a violent crime spree in Post Falls that involved the shooting that left two people wounded, two stolen cars, a pursuit, and the lone suspect in jail tonight. Krem 2's Kyle Simchuk spent the evening in Post Falls and explains what happened. Both victims are in stable condition tonight, including a man who was shot in the neck. Police say this was a random shooting and believe the suspect may have been on drugs. Just after 1.30 this afternoon, as people were getting gas and grabbing coffee, police say 31-year-old Tyson Sterkle pulled up and started shooting at random. You can see a bullet hole in this car's windshield. We have two patients. One patient was shot in the neck. Would you inform Kootenai Health for priority one trauma coming their way? One shot wound to the neck. A second man was injured by shrapnel. Police say Sterkle took off, but his crime spree continued. He ditched his pickup and stole a truck near Greens Ferry Road and Hayden Avenue. He drove it to Highway 53 and McGuire Road, where he carjacked a driver, stealing another truck. Cooney County deputies caught up to Sterkle, and after a short pursuit, he was taken into custody. Sterkle lives in Newport, Washington, and police believe he was on drugs and didn't know any of the people he shot at. Both victims were taken to Kootenai Health and are in stable condition. The man shot in the neck underwent surgery this evening. Baristas at Cocopelli Coffee witnessed the shooting. The coffee stand posted on Facebook, saying in part, It was very scary for everyone and for our girls. We love and appreciate all of your support and ask for only positive thoughts and vibes for all involved during this hectic time. And we did speak with the Post Falls police chief earlier. He says these random shootings are incredibly rare. So right now investigators are questioning the suspect to figure out if he had any motive for what he did today. Reporting in Post Falls, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. A Cheney man is accused of killing his wife back in 2018 by lacing her ice cream with a lethal amount of a prescription drug. The trial for the murder charge continued today in Spokane County Court. Court documents show that David Pettis told police he found his wife laying face down on the floor between their bedroom and bathroom late at night. He said he fell asleep on the couch while his wife was still awake and he woke up to find her on the ground. However, court documents suggest that Pettis poisoned his wife's ice cream. Prosecutors told the jury evidence will prove that Pettis intended to kill his wife to get a $150,000 insurance policy from her death. The defense, however, says that's not what happened. And so what the evidence will show in this case is that Mr. Pettis ground a lethal amount of hydrocodone into an ice cream float and gave it to his wife, causing her death in an attempt to give him life insurance money to be, move off and begin a new life with his new girlfriend. I submit to you that the evidence will show that Ms. Pettis' death was absolutely tragic, that it was the result of an accident or suicide. This is not a homicide. The defense says we can expect to hear the 911 call from Pettis that he made after finding his wife. The state plans to call on several witnesses, including the victim's family members, physicians who treated her, and investigators. A Spokane woman was killed during a trip to Cancun over Thanksgiving weekend. According to a Cancun newspaper, 26-year-old Sativa Transu was found dead in her hotel room on Saturday night. Transu's boyfriend was arrested and remains in Mexican prison on homicide charges. Sativa's sister told us their family has had issues with the boyfriend for more than three years, but that Sativa went to Cancun with him for Thanksgiving weekend. Right now, her family is focusing on getting her remains back to Washington State. We want to get Sativa home at this point. Uh, Taylor's lawyers are having her, her body held there. We can't even get her body home to America. And so we want to get her body home. Sativa's family has set up a GoFundMe to get Sativa's body back to Washington. Her family says any leftover funds will be donated to a domestic violence charity in Sativa's name. All right, let's talk weather now. If you thought it was warm today, you were absolutely correct. We set several records across the region, including in Spokane. And listen to this. OMAC hit 74 degrees today. Cody, Pro Cody Proctor joining us from the Outdoor Weather Center tonight. And Cody, at this hour, 11 o'clock at night, still 52 degrees here in Spokane. Yeah, I mean, that's just really just a few degrees below that record that we set today of 59 degrees for Spokane. But 52 right now, our winds a little breezy at the moment. South, southwest winds about 16 miles per hour at this time. And we're seeing still some pretty mild temperatures across the region. OMAC that you just mentioned right now is currently at 57 degrees, 56 for Wenatchee, currently at 54 right now for Coeur A little breezy out here. We can kind of see that with my hair right now in Spokane. 16 mile per hour winds at the moment for Spokane, 10 for Moses Lake and for OMAC. So some places a little bit breezier than others. We could potentially still see some gusty winds for tonight, especially for the next couple of hours. We might scale back a little bit early tomorrow morning, but 
not terribly by much. So just if you're not a fan of the gusty conditions, you might not be want to spend much time outside early tomorrow morning. Just heads up right there or keep a close eye on your trash can just in case. The next few days tomorrow will still looking to be pretty mild for this time of year. Low 50s are expected for Spokane. We'll scale back more to those mid 40s as we head into Thursday or in, into the rest of the week. So eventually we're going to see those temperatures start to cool down just a bit more, but still looking to be pretty warm for this time of year. Back to you, Mark. All right, Cody, thank you very much. New tonight, an historic building in downtown Spokane could soon be demolished to make space for a new apartment building. The Chancery Building on West Riverside Avenue was vacant back in 2019 due to safety and operational concerns. Centennial Real Estate announced plans for that location and wants to create a new apartment building with 40 to 50 units and a community courtyard. It's been on the market since March and December. We've had many of the people we respect and developers go through it looking to buy the buildings. We had many people walk through it. It was listed here locally. It was listed here in Seattle and we didn't receive any offers on anybody purchasing the wanted to purchase a building. We didn't receive any interest for buying it at that time. And so at, at that point, we're not in a situation where we're just gonna leave a vacant building sitting in the heart of downtown. And so we had other options and we came up with what we think is fantastic design. This building is one of the only ones on this street that is actually not listed on the Spokane Register. So we can review the demolition just in the sense that we can only allow it to go forward if there's a replacement structure that's approved by the Landmarks Commission. Previously, Centennial renovated the M and the Chronicle apartment buildings. A Boise State University professor is speaking out after a speech that he made at a conference earlier in November that went viral. Political science professor Scott Yenor went viral on TikTok after his speech at the National Conservatism Conference. Take a listen. Our independent women seek their purpose in life in mid-level bureaucratic jobs like human resource management, environmental protection, and marketing. They are more medicated, meddlesome, and quarrelsome than women need to be. The conference took place October 31st through November 2nd and included keynote speakers such as Senators Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio. He posted a response to the viral TikTok video on Twitter yesterday. He says he stands by his speech at the conference and asserts that in celebrating women's empowerment and independence, quote, feminists are talking about career-based empowerment and women's independence from the family. Things must change if this country is to rebuild the family. While they medicate themselves in their loneliness, we should rebuild a country where men act with responsibility and purpose. We should build a country where young girls are encouraged to be mothers and wives, as well as enjoying fulfilling jobs if they choose. Boise State University President Dr. Marlene Trump is among dozens of administrators and faculty that have signed a statement expressing the university's support for women. The statement posted this morning reads in part, quote, Boise State University has a long tradition of supporting women. We continue to do so across the university. We defend their right to seek an education, to pursue a range of academic aspirations and dreams, and to make their mark in whatever way they choose. Tonight, abortion rights hang in the balance after the Supreme Court heard arguments in a landmark case. The hearing sparked intense debate both inside and outside the courtroom. While the justice's ruling likely won't come for months, after nearly two hours of arguments, a majority of the justices appeared inclined to uphold Mississippi ban on abortions after 15 weeks. Well, as the pandemic continues, nurse shortages have been an ongoing issue and we come back. How many nurses Washington needs just to fill open positions after the break?